Good morning, people. I'm back in Louisiana. I know I never hiked my property in Shojiao, but there's so much I need to tell y'all. Good morning, Ducky boy. First of all, these chickens. Oh my God, they're gonna be three weeks old tomorrow. Let me let y'all see what we're working with here. Now, I haven't filmed them in a little less than a week. The last time I filmed them for y'all was Tuesday. So it's now Sunday. Wait till y'all see how big these babies have gotten. They're in that ugly teenage stage, which they're so ugly they're cute. Look at ducks. Wow. And all the feathers on the babies. Look at them. They're massive. I haven't fed them yet. Let's have a little bit of food in that one, but as you see, this feeder is empty. Gotta take care of that. Rambunctious this morning. Hey, ask why. And we named this one Daffy. Don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but Daffy will work either way. So that's Daffy and Affleck to go with my Billy and Michael outside. Look at that one, so I can zoom in on Look at that. So cute, little mohawk coming in. Little mohawk. Okay, kind of washed out. <laughs> Curious about the camera. Well, about my phone. I still haven't figured out my camera, y'all. Big fluff ball back there in the corner. I can't get up like on camera than you did. Look at that. Okay, now for everything I need to talk to y'all about. Okay. So, we drove up there Wednesday night. We got up there Thursday morning around 9.30ish. Well, 9 o'clock-ish. We immediately drove around back of the property. And that's when the started filming for y'all that little clip. We came back up, met up with my neighbor that lives across the street from me and visited with him for a little while, kind of got caught up, found out that the road has a name, and if we're gonna be moving up there permanently, I need an address. So I started trying to figure out what I needed to do to get an address. Um, he couldn't remember everything he did. He couldn't find the phone number I needed to call. All right, doctor, you're in my way. So, we were waiting on the guy to get off work. He didn't get off work till 2.30 to come and cut in the, you know, to tell him about cutting in the driveway. See where we wanted things. Well, while we were there, we went and looked at our neighbor's um, shed that he purchased from right down the road um, that he was living in. And I mean, yeah, there's still a long ways to go, but it was nice and comfortable, and it was cute. And I was like, if we could go a little bit bigger than this, he had like a 12 by 30, I think it was. But it's just him and his wife. And uh, he's like, the first thing I recommend, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm happy, 
but I would have went a little bit wider if I could have. I was like, okay, so 14 to 16. I mean, my trailer is a 16 by 80, so I know what 16 feet feels like. So I'm like, okay, you know, a 14 or a 16 would be good. So we went to the shed place because we had to stay awake. Uh, hotel check-in wasn't till three. Um, we had our key, we had our room, we just couldn't do anything with it. We went and did that, so it was like, let's go check out the sheds. So we went and talked to the owner. We ended up getting a 14 by 44, which it came with three lofts, but we didn't want the loft in the middle. So instead of the two eight foot lofts on the edge, he's gonna do two 12 foot lofts and just separate the middle loft space and add it to the ends. And we're thinking that's where our bedrooms are gonna be upstairs. Okay, I built a ladder to climb up there to sleep. But even with the loft, my six foot six husband had barely any clearance, but he had clearance under the loft. He could walk under the loft without a problem. So me and my son was able to, you know, no problem. Um, so we put the money down for fear that the prices would go up again. But like he said, he was praying they wouldn't go up again because he's already raised prices three times in the past several months. And he's like, I'm going to go out of business if I have to raise prices again, you know, like it's outrageous. So, I went ahead and put the down payment down. It should be done being built by June 1st, so May 29th. We are rolling out maybe May 30th, maybe the night of May 29th, so we can get there on the 30th, get a hotel for one night, get the shed moved in. And we're gonna be going up there with the U-Haul with all of our stuff. All right, so about five o'clock, we finally made it into the hotel room and we all passed out. Like we went and had lunch at the a little cafe that they had in town. It was, I had breakfast, it was really good. Even though it was, not quite breakfast time, whenever I ate, they served breakfast one of our hours a day, so I had breakfast, it was nice. Um, my husband had the biggest steak he could get on the menu, he was starving by the time we got there. And then my son had a burger, I think. But that's besides the point, okay. So we had lunch, or dinner, dinner, and we went back to the hotel and we passed out. We woke up the next morning and it was like, okay, we've got to figure out what to do about this address situation. So I Googled how to get to the courthouse. I was like, okay, I'm sure the courthouse can tell us, you know, the number to call, you know, clerk court, whatever they have up there, you know, just the courthouse should be able to help us. So we got up to the courthouse and they gave us a phone number to the 911 emergency addressing services. 911 gives you their address and they GPS locate where your driveway is so that if you call 911, they can get to you. Which I'm not sure how it works around here. I've never had raw land and had to get an address for a place before, but I thought that was very smart, you know, to have them go out there and GPS locate exactly where the address is, where the driveway is, so that if you have to call emergency services, they know how to get to you. <coughs> Well, I called them and gave them the name of the front road. Now, I have six also that goes up on a different road, and he gave me the name of that road, which it was a cute name, and uh, much cuter than the name of the road that we're going to have, but, you know, the people back there did a poll on what name they wanted, and the two winners, you know, on those two in particular roads that are mine. Well, anyways, up at the top of six, I don't want my mailbox. I don't want them to go up there if I'm going to be living down on nine. So, I told them, you know, where I want my address. I had to go out and mark my driveway with some flags so that the GPS locator can go out there and pinpoint exactly where my driveway is going to be. And they told me that somebody... Now, y'all saw in the video that someone caught my wood pile on fire and threw it down my mountain. 
according to Shannon, it's a hill, but the highest point in Missouri is only 1,700 and something foot elevation, and it's Mount, I forgot the name of it, and I'm like, the tip that I'm at is only a few feet shy of that, like four, five feet shy of that. So, I'm one of the highest points in Missouri. So, um... They told me that someone had already petitioned for an address to that location. Well, where I bought the property at is owner financing. So I called them and I was like, look, um, did y'all petition for an address for that location? You know, because if they would have, it would have been fine. And they were like, no, let me call you back. Because, you know, people don't make their payments and they put the property back up for sale. And so they were thinking that maybe somebody else had done it before I bought it. And they're like, no, since we put this property up for sale, you're the only person that's owned it. You know, like you purchased it, you've made every single payment for the past year, you know, that you've had it. Um, so we don't know what's going on now. But the county's already closed. So Monday, can you call the county and tell them to call us? Because nobody can have an address. If you don't want an address to that spot, then there's no address to that spot. Like that's your land. I want to use six as most well, likely hunting land. So, I mean, it's six acres, nice little hunting spot. Good deal, love it, you know? So, y'all saw how steep it was. It's pretty hard to build anything off of that. I mean, I'm sure I could come in from the bottom, but still just getting up to the driveway is gonna be crazy. So I don't want an address there, but if somebody else is petitioned for an address there, then are they trying to claim my land? Or are they trying to say that they, they live there? I don't know, there's so many unanswered questions. So a guy from the company came out and was like, you know, some people are confused about where their lots are. Let me come out and let's walk your lots, in, you know, and see if you're in the right spots, which I mean, they gave us uh, an app that we can download on our phones to pinpoint the exact location of our lots. So I showed him where I wanted my driveway. I was like, you know, I have it marked with these flags. Um, is it that enough easement off, you know, the two sides of the property? He's like, oh yeah, that's, he's like, that's right down the center. Nine, my lot on nine where my home's gonna be, if you think of an acre squared, it's about an acre wide and it goes back eight acres. Now, if you look at six, it's a point and then it goes down. It's because of, it's on that slope, it's kind of really hard to, I mean, it goes down and it goes down and it comes across and it comes to a little bitty point at the end on the map. But with me having nine, it that whole 240 foot line or whatever it is meets up to nine. So it just kind of goes all the way. <coughs> but um, so one day I have to call the county and find out what's going on with that. Um, they can't, I'm sure they can't give me any name of anybody that's petitioned for that. But being that the land is still in the company's name that I'm financing from, I'm doing an owner finance, then they're like, we're willing to submit any paperwork to show them that, you know, that's your land. Uh, whatever we need to do, maybe they can tell us a name of somebody who was, you know, trying to petition, being that we own the land, you know, like who's putting an address on our land. So I have to deal with that Monday. But yes, the last week in, in May, we are headed out. We're packing up mattresses, my dining room table, my television, some clothes. Hey, honey. Hey. I'm just kind of giving everybody a rundown on what we went through. I really wanted to walk the property with y'all, but that next day was just so full of paperwork, basically. I mean, it wasn't literal paperwork, but, you know, phone calls and meetings and, I mean, a country mile 
I mean, I was like, oh, look, it says it's only four miles that way. And 20 minutes later, it felt like, you know, we're finally at the courthouse. And it's like, yeah, four miles is a long ways in the country. I mean, I remember when it was like that here. We've grown up so much. It just felt like forever. We did find a little barbecue place south in the town south of us. There's a Walmart. And we went down that area, kind of drop around and see what they had. I mean, we're going to need jobs to work, but we'll get up there. Um, Walmart's hiring $15 an hour. Hmm, who would have thought? Uh, the jail is hiring $15 an hour. Do you want to work at the jail $15 an hour? Do you want to work at Walmart $15 an hour? You know, like, what are we going to do here? So we have to fill out some applications and be ready for the first week in June. Uh, I went, we went to Lowe's and we priced, yeah, I just told them on film all about to feed them. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be feeding the birds. But, um, what was I saying? Oh, I went to Lowe's. I purchased some stoves, um, they had a propane stove for like $600. And then they had a gas stove that came with a propane converter for free for $500. And it was bigger. I was like, I think I want to go with the gas stove that's bigger. I can actually fit my Maglite pot on it. So, you know. And it's got a full-size oven. Alright, well. It was a very busy trip. I won't be taking any more trips up there until I pack up, load up, and go. So, for the next month and a half, I have to. Seven weeks? Y'all, seven weeks. Ugh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Uh, water situation. We were talking to the neighbors. Uh, talk to the neighbors and figure out what they were doing. There's a place in town that was basically filling up the, I don't know, it's like four cent a gallon. But it was city water. So one of the neighbors, the same neighbor that is cutting in my driveway, has a well. And he's like, I'll fill that up for $4, you know, like, because they were paying roughly $4 and some change to fill up their huge water thing. <clears throat> he's like, I'll fill it up for $4. So they started doing that. The water's better, you know, than city water. So that's the most, we just got to get some big water containers. They have like the 200 gallon, 2,000 gallon. The 2,000 gallon that runs almost $1,000. Um, I'm going to put me out some blue barrels with some spigots on the bottom off of all of my outbuildings so that I can water my animals with that. Um, composting toilet, although I really want an outhouse. I really, really, really want an outhouse. But, um,. The family's a little bit eh, on the outhouse idea. You would think, I mean, they got a family of boys. You would think they wouldn't care. I don't care. Yeah, you don't, but some do. Yeah. So, membership at the Y. I mean, we have our portable showers, and we're going to get a hot tap so that we could shower ourselves off and clean ourselves up without a problem, but... You can get a membership at the YMCA for $31 a month and swimming pool, hot showers, which will have hot showers with the hot tap, but then, you know, water. I don't know. It's all things to think about. I just want to make sure that we have plenty of water, plenty of food. Um, I want to be able to clean ourselves. And I want to be able to go to the restroom in comfort. Not squatting down in the woods somewhere like a caveman. You know. <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm excited, y'all. Uh, the colors I picked out for the, um, I think it was chestnut brown. Chestnut brown walls and charcoal trim and windows. So. And Yeah, charcoal tin roof. And I figured the, I went with the darker colors because I figured my thinking, not sleeping at all, 
for 20 something hours. Well, I mean, for I'm sorry, for almost 40 hours. My thinking was in the winter time, the snow's gonna pile up on the roof. If I have a dark color, it'll absorb heat and help melt the snow faster. I don't know. That was my thinking while I was half asleep. Now, whether or not that's gonna work or not, I have no idea, but that was my logic at the time I made that choice. All right, I'm gonna give y'all another trip at the babies and then I'll upload this. Just kidding. French black copper moron. So gorgeous. Daffy, a black. That's Daffy Duck, uh, Doc. That's Daffy. That's Daffy. And that's Affleck. Other than that, usually only my roosters get a name. You have a bunch of hens that look like it's kind of hard to tell them apart, so usually my roosters get names. in that ugly, awkward teenage stage, and it's so cute. All right, guys, if you like this video, like, comment, share. I'm not sure how this works. I'm not monetized. Love y'all. Bye.